In this video, you will learn how to improve reading comprehension on digital SAT. If you're new here, hi, my name is Katsi Sieberson. I'm the inventor of the Sieberson Method. It's a scientifically proven way to learn anything fast, especially reading comprehension. I wrote these two books. One was on reading faster and another book was on SAT vocabulary. Check them out. And I've been doing SAT prep and I've been an SAT instructor here in New York for the last 10 years. This is not my side career or something that I do part-time. No, SAT is my full-time business. SAT is my life. I'm running a private practice, but also a group membership. If you would like to get direct help from me, click the link below this video and check out the membership. I'd love to have you there. As you all know, the College Board has redesigned the verbal section of the SAT yet again. And this is not the first time they're doing this. And we have to say goodbye to my favorite lengthy passages that were quirky and informative. And now the passages that used to be 650 and 850 words are now becoming shorter. The longest passage that you will get on the digital SAT is only drum roll 150 words short. In theory, this should be good news because so many students have been complaining about how hard it is for them to stay focused on a long passage. But in reality, students who struggled with reading comprehension of long passages get just as low of a score on a digital SAT. And this is because the College Board continuously employs the exact same reading obstacles as they used to employ on longer passages. In a way, having shorter passages is worse for reading comprehension because in the past, when you would see a sentence and not understand it, you can skip it hoping that the author may circle back and talk about the same thing again later in the conclusion. Now that the passages are only one, two, or maybe three sentences long, your complete comprehension of every single sentence is that much more important. So earlier in the video, I mentioned that the College Board continuously uses the exact same reading comprehension obstacles. Katya, what are those reading comprehension obstacles? Well, I thought that you will never ask. There are four main reading comprehension obstacles that I define, and we will do this like video series where I will be talking about each and every reading comprehension obstacle in a separate video. In this video, we will talk about the first one. So let's go. The number one obstacle to reading comprehension is interrupted sentence structures. This is when words that are closely linked together are not located together. Let me show you an example. Let's start with a basic sentence like this. The model will triple the output. My subject is the model. My verb is will triple and my object is the output. You see all of the components of the sentence are closely linked together. Now let's try to make the sentence a little bit more advanced and complicated. Let's separate the subject from the verb. So we have the subject, the model, and we have the verb, will triple. In the middle, we have, we call this an ED phrase. You might know this as an participle two, created by biologist Luis Valente. This is something that is obscuring the focus of the sentence. The focus of the sentence is still on the model tripling the output, not on the fact that it was created by the biologist Luis Valente. Let's take it up another notch. Let's obscure the meaning even more. Here we have the model and we still have our verb right here, we'll triple. What we have in between is created by the evolutionary biologist, Luis Valente, from um, Groningen Institute for Evolutionary Life Sciences. This last third sentence is actually very similar to the actual sentences that you will see on digital reading section. So Katya, how should we overcome this obstacle? And the number one recommendation that I give to my clients is this. Try to go back to your BSS, basic sentence structure. 
the structure of what is my subject, what is my verb, what is my object, what are my essential parts of the sentence. Some grammarians call it the kernel sentence. Here at Seberson Method, we call it the BSS. When you see a long sentence like this one, you're going to just narrow it down to your BSS. And once you have your foundation, then you can add in the details. The model will triple the output. Good. What kind of model? What are the modifiers for the model? What else do I know about the model? The model was created by evolutionary biologist Luis Valente. What else can I know about him? Then there's a prepositional phrase here from a Groningen University for Evolutionary Science, Life and Sciences. Now you're adding in once you have your foundation in place. And when you're summarizing a sentence in your own head, rely on your BSS more than you are relying on other parts of the sentence. I don't want to leave you guys with just one example. So let's do this experiment. I'm going to show you a sentence on the screen for just a split second. Your job is to look at the sentence and try to understand what it means. You can pause the video, but you should have plenty of time to do it as the video is rolling. Then if you are on your computer, maybe in your, inside of your phone, maybe on a piece of paper, you will write down a quick summary of that sentence. And then once you unpause, we will do this together and see if you were able to catch the interrupted sentence structure or whether you fell for the trap. All right, ready, set, go. All right, now take a moment and write down the summary from memory. What was this sentence about? What was its main idea? If you said that this sentence was about Silicon Valley startups having success, you fell for the trap. Because here we have an interrupted structure, the phrase one out of seven is grammatically connected together. And it actually, for my math lovers, it represents one seventh. One out of seven becomes a success. So if you interpreted this sentence as if many ed, uh, ed tech startups are becoming a success, you actually misunderstood the passage and you will probably end up answering the reading comprehension question incorrectly. If you found this video helpful, please let me know with your likes, with your subscription and your comments. Also remember that if you want more practice just like this one, and if you want direct help from me, I would love for you to join the membership and I will see you guys in the comments and also in the next video.